Today it appears that we're getting the first glimpse of all the Space Marine points cost from the Indomitus box. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we've been covering the 9th edition news and developments as they come out. Today posted to multiple places on the internet, we have really quite a big Space Marine League if it proves accurate. It appears to be a short list of points costs from models in the Indomitus box, including that Fire Strike, Servo Turret and Invader ATV. So at this early stage I don't think that we can say 100% this is definitely genuine. If it is a fake then it looks like quite a convincing one to me, from the rest of the documents it does seem to be in a very consistent style and does look like something that Games Workshop would produce. The points cost to me all seem pretty reasonable as well, there is nothing too strange on here, with the exception of one particular model that is pretty much the biggest question mark with this leak. Even if it does come from Games Workshop, it could be an early version of their playtesting rules, a list of points costs that they had already before actually finalising some new ones. But for me, the points cost seem really quite genuine, so at least for now, I'm going to talk about it as if this were the real points cost from the Indomitus box. If it does come to light this was complete rubbish, then I'll probably delete this video and just make a new one, so I'm not leading anyone astray. With all that being said, let's get into it. First of all, we have Assault Intercessors at 19 points a model, plus 5 for the Plasma Pistol Sergeant, and it should be noted that unlike some other things, the points per model for this does include all war gear. It's got a couple of little asterisks spied, and it says including war gear at the bottom of the section. It's not too unusual for them to do with single pose models when they first come out in new kits like this. So we don't know the full details of the Assault Intercessors and how those Astartes Chainswords might work yet, as they could have their own special rules giving them extra strength or AP on the charge or something. But for a slightly more fighty Intercessor, 19 points seems fairly reasonable. I do think that in general having the Bolt Rifle is more use than a close combat weapon as it's just a bit more flexible and of course standard intercessors can fight in combat fairly decently so i think this a little bit below standard intercessors really seems sensible we know the sergeant had a plasma pistol option from the kit that we had previewed i suspect when these monopose models come out i suspect that he'll have to take that maybe he'll gain the option to either take or leave it if and when they get a full multi-part plastic kit we have the Blade Guard Veterans, pegged at 35 points per model. These guys we know have Storm Shields and Mastercrafted Power Swords, and likely their own sort of special rules, quite possibly a Bodyguard type special rule for Space Marine characters. For slow moving, close combat focused troops, I think the 35 points could be a little bit pricey for them, but it's no divine that they'll be very tough to remove, and they are the sort of unit that I'd expect would have more interesting special rules as well, so we'll have to wait and see. Of course we all know the Eradicators stat line from the preview that Games Workshop did. They were only 5 power level so people are estimating around about 100 points. If they are 40 points like mentioned here, then that would be a little bit worse. And to be honest I think that, that would be a fairly reasonable points cost for them. I think 100 would be too cheap, but if you start pricing them at higher than this, as I really suspect that you're just not going to see them fielded all that much. I know their rules are good, but they completely lack any close combat like the Aggressors, who are absolutely fearsome in close combat, and their double shoot rule is a little bit restrictive, forcing them to only target one unit, even if that doesn't make sense. I know people's opinions will vary on this, but I think that 120 points for them is a fairly reasonable cost when taken into context of the Space Marine Army, which isn't to say that other armies couldn't have buffs to certain units, such as Eldar Fire Dragons for example, to better improve external balance. Next we have the Outriders at 45 points per model, again this feels pretty much reasonable to me. They have a profile that's at least fairly similar to the Inceptors, a little tougher, a little faster, but lacking the very useful fly keyword and deep strike, having weaker shooting but stronger close combat. Again I think that 45 points does put them in the area where they'd be decently used, and we might genuinely see some Space Marine Biker type armies come back to the table if you can take them in larger units. I think 45 points would have been roundabout where I would have guessed Games Workshop would have put them myself. In terms of characters from the Indomitus box, we have a captain with a storm shield and his mastercrafted power sword, and the lieutenant who's armed with the same. The storm shields will certainly be a really useful survivability boost, and you usually pay about 10 points for a character one on a space marine character, so they seem pretty much in line with other space marine captains. I hope at least at some time down the line we get the flexibility to take things like a power fist and storm shield, which I think would be a bit more of an optimal loadout than the mastercrafted power swords that they have. Finally, we have the other three characters all pegged to 85 points, the Primaris Chaplain, the Judiciar, and the Bladeguard Ancient. Naturally, we can't really comment on the Judiciar or the Bladeguard Ancient at all. Their value is going to be through their buffs, so again, we're totally going to have to wait and see. The Chaplain himself is up to 85 points from 77 points in the previous edition. He's the only non-new model in the box, and that's put him up around about 10% on his previous incarnation. He used to be 77 points, now he's 85. Again, pretty much in line with what would be expected. So now we get to the other units, including the most questionable include on this list. First of all, we have that Fire Strike Servo Turret and the Invader ATV, both of which can be taken in units of 1 to 3. The Fire Strike Turrets can either have those twin Accelerator Auto Cannons, and they can also have a Last Talon as well. 
and the cost is really quite radically different to be honest. It's 90 points with the auto cannons, or 130 with the last talons. I really wouldn't be too surprised if this unit had some sort of extra rule to make its gunnery a bit better. Maybe either longer range for that last talon, or maybe being able to fire additional times or extra hits on sixes or something. Being a static firebase unit really is a downside, so I suspect we'll get some sort of similar upside in compensation. The Invader ATV is almost the points cost of two of the Outriders, and it does sound like you'll be fielding them in their own separate squads, rather than mixed in with the Outriders like attack bikes are. According to Games Workshop, it's either going to be armed with a Onslaught Gatling Cannon, so the six-shot one, or a Multi-Melter, and to be 80 points for the first, and 85 for the second. For me, I'm not sure entirely how overwhelming this is. There might be more to it than a simple gun platform, but honestly, if all it got was one Multi-Melter shot, and a few Bolt Rifle shots for 85 points on a durable platform, then it'd be just incredibly underwhelming in terms of damage output. Finally, we get to what is the most questionable include on this list, and the one that really makes or breaks whether or not this is a genuine leak. Basically included in this list of points are the points cost for a Primaris Chaplain on bike. Obviously, he is not in the Indomitus box, so if they were releasing him alongside it, it'd have to be in a similar sort of style to that Invader ATV and Firestrike turrets as an additional surprise unit to give you a character sort of option to lead your Outriders into battle. Now, this is clearly the most questionable thing on the entire list, as it's the only thing that we haven't heard about, and it would be a prime target for someone to make up. I'm genuinely unsure if it's more likely for someone to have made this up and stick it in with a whole bunch of very reasonable points costs, or it is just for Games Workshop to be responding to the community's obvious wishes that they'd like to see their chaplains on bikes, and were quite disappointed when he made the move over to Legends. Honestly, releasing a character on bike really wouldn't be a bad idea for them. Seeing as they have designed some fancy new bikers, it gives them the opportunity to sell another model. They have been known to do similar things before, such as when they released the Eldar Windrider jet bikes, they released a Warlock and Farseer Skyrunner at the same time, I guess it does kind of make sense if one person is working on bikes, then why not make a bike character as well? In any case, 130 points seems pretty reasonable for a character that gets the sort of boost that you'd get on that Outrider bike platform. I would see this guy as a bit of a litmus test as to whether or not the rest of the leak is right. If over the next few weeks, then Games Workshop does preview us a Primaris Chaplain on bike, then it's likely that the rest of the leak is correct. If not, then maybe it's just a fairly convincing fake. I'll leave the judgement call up to yourselves. I'm going to go with this probably being true now, but I guess only time will tell. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe for the channel for more 9th edition news and other leaks and rumours that come out. If you have been watching my videos a lot recently, then any support on the All Specs Tactics Patreon page is massively appreciated. It is what keeps the channel going and allows me to do this more full time. As well as supporting the channel's video creation, you also get to see regular videos early compared with other people. You get to vote on regular polls to see what sort of videos I make next and there's monthly prize draws that Patreons get entered into, the next one of which I'm going to be giving away three copies of the Indomitus box. If any of that interests you, then the Patreon link is down in the video description below. Feel free to check it out. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.